Genevieve Gorder, a TV host and interior designer extraordinaire, is the star of the new series, At Home with Genevieve on Chicken Soup for the Soul. Thank you so much for your time today. Thank you for having me. I'm excited. This show is featuring all my favorite things to talk about, design, food, cocktails, gardening, pets. I mean, tell me a little bit about, about creating the series. Don't you love that cocktails is like part of the vernacular of the show? <laughs> <laughs> After COVID, we all know this is a full-on department at home. Um, you know, I have for decades been doing uh, design television where I've renovated all of these homes all over the country, all over the world. And I, I really wanted to dig a little bit deeper into the world of talk because I have these beautiful conversations with human beings all the time in the world of lifestyle that I never get to show or share. And so this was that opportunity for me to learn and to exercise all of these incredible relationships that I have, some of which I was just like a fan of these people. So it was my relationship. And then they <laughs> came in and we actually became friends because I, I stalk home people online. Like if I like what you're doing, I can't get enough of you. And then you're going to come be on my show. And so we are unraveling home and lifestyle, I think in a very modern way. It's faster than a typical talk show. I'm talking to such a wide spectrum of human beings that you don't normally get to see in the world of home. All of our voices are not there. And this has always been a huge complaint for me in the world of interior design. I wanna see every color. I want every sexuality. I want every age group. I want even genders. I wanna hear what you have to say because that's how you understand what's going on for real in home because we all don't live the same. So, oh, exactly. And I also think sometimes you get a, you know, a, a different sense when you live in a city where you might go to your corner store, you might have a friend, but if you live in other parts of the country, you may not get that same type of experience. So it's great to expose people and for people to see themselves. And this is just a, a wonderful concept for the show. Thank you. I think it's also like you touched on, you know, we live in cities and so often that isn't really represented in design television. It's very suburban centric, which it's easier to shoot. You know, it's easier to manipulate production when you have a lot more room. But the majority of us live in big urban areas. And so this show is focused really in that arena. So we, we don't have huge floor plans. We don't have huge gardens. So let's talk about how we make it work. No one's addressing us. So I will. <laughs> there, there you go. Let's talk a little bit about what you are, what are your trends for, for the summer of 2023? Like, what are you loving and what are, can you not like wait to share with people on the series? You know, I do. I absolutely trend forecast. I mean, my whole life I've been doing that and I love it because home is, it doesn't move quite as fast as fashion, but we're catching up. We used to be a lot clunkier. I feel like this show is giving home a little bit more potential to say that they're cool because home can be cool and we've been made to not look cool for so long it's just like how fast how cheap can you do this right but it's home is so much more and when you feel good about your home you feel cool everyone wants to come over as far as trends go seasonally this isn't even a trend it's just kind of an exercise as we come into these warmer months think about your throw pillows linens your throws linens clean soft nudes are huge right now every color of clay is still here to play we're not living deep and dark in those jewel tones or earth tones right now green is kind of on its way out as we dipped really hard during covid because we were so sick of the sterility of tech and those color palettes but we're really going into the lighter cleaner neutrals we want these clean clean palettes in home I have a black room that I'm sitting in right now. The world can't seem to get enough of this color on exterior and interior. And then the nudes are all the surround. I love that because I think it's the chicest color in the world. Um, and then as far as like stuff, that curve of furniture is leaving. Those big bulbous round shapes are starting to leave and we're dipping back into the rectilinear or somewhere in between, which is exciting. It's kind of like a balance of male, female, if that makes sense. Natural fiber rugs, washable rugs, all the rage. Um, I mean, I could keep going. How long do you really have? <laughs> <laughs> it, it, you know, you, you talk about this too, not, uh, but just, you know, in general, as far as like changing up your wardrobe or changing up different aspects of your personality, like checking in with yourself, like every couple of months or, you know, maybe twice a year, how often should you be switching things up in your home? Like maybe you don't, you like the color of the walls, but maybe, you know, the bed sheets might need to go, or maybe the dishes right. you have, like how often should you be kind of checking in on maybe not having too much clutter or maybe giving it a little bit of a facelift? You know, it really depends on how you're living. If you have a bunch of little kids, it's going to be very different than if you're like a single guy living alone. I would say this, 
Painting generally is every five years at least, okay? If you have little kids, it's probably less than that. As walls and life tends to show its wear on your on the, your surroundings. So I would say that is like the biggest and best, most affordable thing you can do regularly, no matter where you live or how you're living, because it makes your place feel new, fresh, clean for nothing. You're not buying sofas. You're just painting. It's like $25 a gallon, right? But you can give a whole new mood. Um, as far as refreshing, I would say move stuff around, change the floor plan instead of buying new. Maybe switch out a chair or a, a colorway of throws and curtains, but don't go for the big stuff until you're sure, because those are purchases like sofas. If you're buying good stuff, it can be every seven years that you replace every eight years. And yes, I know some of us have had stuff for 20 and that's amazing. But as, as younger generations seem to be buying a little bit more disposable furniture, um, as it, they don't even try it out, they'll just buy it online. Right. And then yeah. you don't tend to keep it as long. You didn't do the sit test. You didn't know what exact color it's going to be. And so I've seen stuff become a little bit more disposable, which is not good. We don't want to dispose things. We want to keep things for the environment. Let's like try and reuse things. I mean, you uh, just want a, a great point because you know, some people and some families is like, this is grandpa's chair. This is his chair that he sat in for 40 years and it's never left the house. And now with furniture, it's like you just buy it off the internet and it may last, oh, you know, it doesn't feel comfortable and doesn't have that same kind of sentiment. Well, anything comfort. made pre-war generally was made better than we're making things now because it wasn't about fast furniture, fast fashion, fast furniture. So what I would do with grandpa's chair, if it has a nice shape, just get it reupholstered and still grandpa's chair, but it's just you like to sit in grandpa's chair now because it looks good. It, it looks good. <laughs> Another thing too, especially... This summer, people people are traveling. People, you know, and, and the thing that I try to do for for myself, and you know, maybe share with the audience is that you get you know souvenirs and things from your travels, and it sticks yeah. in a box. You put it in your closet, and you never see it again. Maybe right. some ideas for people traveling this summer and how you can make that part of your personality of uh, of your home. Oh, I absolutely do this. I don't buy you know, t-shirts and little snow globes, I'll buy a pillow, I'll buy a plate, I'll buy a throw, a piece of fabric that I'll turn into something. And that's how I tell the story. And basically your home's job is the display case of who you are. It's telling the story of you, where you've been, where you're from and what you've seen. So think about that as you're traveling. Yes, maybe you'll buy a sculpture, but chances are you're going to buy something that fits in your suitcase. So is that an ornament you can hang on the wall? Is it a throw that you can put on the back of your sofa? Is it a plate that you can take out to make the special salad when all the people are over? Think about collecting in this way where it becomes very functional. And even when you're talking about food and drink on the show, these are, you know, you're getting a, a plate, getting a, sp a special spoon, knowing a, a recipe that you want to try with your family and friends. I mean, what a great way to, to watch the show and incorporate that into uh, your For friend sure. night, your family night, your game nights. Well, yeah. And people feel special when there's like, just even if it's a spoon, like I have these spoons that probably cost me 50 cents that I bought in Tanzania. And they're made out of horn and they're really pretty. And when I have people over, I will take that out and you will put a little mustard on your plate with that spoon. And you, th you think, this is so cool. Where did she get that? What's the story? What is this? And then I get to tell the story about that trip. And so you get to constantly relive these really beautiful moments that make up your life, the ones you celebrate. So do it through home. It's the best exercise of collecting. Yeah, and I know like, for myself, pre-COVID was you were out all the time. You weren't really paying attention to your home and you'd buy something new and you wanted to, to keep it looking pretty, but you maybe you wanted to go check out the new restaurant or, or hang out yeah. at, at the hottest you know spots. And now you want to entertain at home because you had that time to reflect and make your home special. Um, yeah. let's, and let's we just like being home. <laughs> yeah. Like how much less do you go out now? Like say you were at a hundred pre-COVID, how much are you going out now? 30 percent yeah i know yeah I'm a little weird about it too and it's like i've edited how i want to go out and do i want to go out yeah. and i do but it's like i don't want to go as hard as i used to we were just gone yeah we were exhausted so i'm kind of happy for this this new medium it's um a lot more chill <laughs> and it's also the perfect time for your show to come out yes. you know not 2019 but but 2023 because people now have that appreciation they want to connect with their family and friends they want to make 
they're, you know, maybe they didn't have time to garden before. Maybe they didn't have time to learn right. a new recipe and invite people over. And now everyone appreciates it. And now everybody can Thank come you. together. I do feel like it's the perfect time. And it's conversations that aren't heavy lips, but really freaking interesting. Like, yes, I want a drag queen to give me love therapy because they've lived harder than I have. They know exactly what to say or when to cut them out. I have a marital issue. I'm going to ask them. I want someone who quit their job in tech, who went to go live with their grandma to learn how to make dumplings like a professional to come and teach me. And I've been watching him for 10 years online and he flew in. I want to make mocktails with someone who just got sober and this keeps them feeling good. Let's go. I want to clean with someone who makes all their own potions and doesn't just buy off the shelf, but is like, this is how your great grandma did it. And it's two cents. Let's go. And I love that. I love it. So whatever I'm interested in, uh, we just go and we wormhole and we really dig in in a way that we never have time to do on regular home television. People maybe in the Midwest who go through different seasons. So I think sometimes you get a false sense of redecorating your home or repurposing it because you're like, it's hot. Let's bring out you know, the bright colors, it's cold, let's bring out the holiday decorations and darker colors. And sometimes you don't necessarily think like, I'm actually making a change. It's just, you just go from like A to B, A to B, A to B. Uh -huh. Talk a little bit about that. I think, you know, coming from the Midwest too, I think there's a lot of kind of antiquated rituals that we have with home and color palettes that we've probably outgrown, but we just do because we think, oh, this is what we have to do. Like, I have my own pet peeves with Minnesota in that like we in cabin culture, it's all so dark. It's like dark green and dark burgundy. And that's nobody's favorite color together. It's just like what everyone's done because that's the color of the forest. But truly in Scandinavia, where like the main immigrant base is from cabin culture in Minnesota, it's all whitewashed and black houses with you know <laughs> celebrating the light with like green roofs. So I hear you because I think we get really sticky in the middle with our traditions. I would say this is the one space in the world that you control and is supposed to represent you. Any tradition you want to hang on to, then it's yours. And if it makes you happy and gives you joy, go for it. But there is nothing that you have to do. No one is expecting you to change out your window treatments, to change a whole new color palette. But maybe change the displays, like give me a big bowl of beautiful citrus in the wintertime or beautiful herbs in the summertime, like decorate with what's in season. I'll never forget from my wedding in Morocco, it wasn't about buying tons of fresh flowers and spending crazy money. It was like, I'm going to use all the spices as my decor, piles of spices down the middle of the table. And you know what? It was authentic. It was authentic to write then. Grab a branch from your backyard, put it in a wood vase, let it dry out and stay there for a month. It's awesome. And it is seasonal. And it says right away, we're in spring without having to change every slip cover and every rug in the house. Don't stress yourself out. Live comfortably, work on the small displays and the things that feel good. Awesome. Well, Genevieve, it was so great uh, to meet you. So great to, to chat with you at home with Genevieve on Chicken Soup for the Soul and Crackle as well. Yes. Pleasure, Rudy. Have a great Thank day. You, you too. Bye-bye.